Hello, my name is Sean Ennis from Ennis Management, and thank you for joining me once again on this episode of The Creative Collective. And today I'm honored to be joined by a very special guest, singer-songwriter out of Kansas City, Bill Abernathy. Hi, Sean. How you doing? Thank you very much for having me on your show. I'm really looking forward to our discussion. Yes, sir. Thank you for joining me. So, you're from Kansas City? Yeah, I was, I've, uh, I'm a really a true Kansas City native. I was uh, raised in one of the suburbs of Kansas City, and now uh, I live in, in my loft that I built uh, down in old, old Kansas City, right at the Kansas City City Market area. Now, what's one thing that you could tell me about Kansas City that someone not someone who's not natively from there would wouldn't know <laughs> uh, Kansas City's an interesting place so if, you, if you're looking for music uh, and you want to go hear music you can hear really really good music just about any night of the week in Kansas City uh, in a, multiple different genres you know if you, Kansas City's a big jazz and blues town and uh, some really outstanding musicians uh, are playing locally there just all the time. And um, uh, if, if you're in Kansas City, do yourself a favor. Number one, get a steak. And number two, find some blues and some jazz, and you'll be impressed. It makes for a great evening. Excellent. Now, how long have you been practicing your craft? <laughs> uh, a long, long, long time. So uh, I started playing uh, when I was about six, seven, something like that. Uh, I had an older brother that, that uh, was uh, nine years older than I. He played a little bit, and uh, that influenced me. And I started playing when I was really young and uh, then went through, you know, multiple different trainings of lessons. And I went to Kansas City to serve your music for a bit and, and uh, different things. And so really, really, Sean, I've been playing my whole life, and I'm 61, so you can do the math. So I've been, I've been playing for about 54 years. Wow, that is incredible. And you play um, multiple different styles of the guitar, is that correct? Yeah, yeah primarily uh, my, my sweet spot uh, on a guitar is really the acoustic stuff. Uh, I really enjoy that. I'm a finger picker. Uh, so if, if you like that really pretty, you know, finger picker style music, uh, I, you probably will enjoy mine. Um, I, that's, that's kind of my home. Right? That's where I'm really comfortable. Of course, you know you're a guitar player, right? So you know you're gonna you're gonna pick up a 12 string and strum through it a little bit. You know you might uh, uh, grab your your Les Paul and you know do a little rock thing. You know, so it it, uh, it, it really just depends. But where I'm comfortable, uh, when I sit down to practice, my my nine string guitar is the first one that comes off the wall, and uh, we spend a lot of time together. As a matter of fact, I'm sitting in a hotel room right now in St. Louis and that guitar is with me. So Now for a novice like myself, what what are the difference in the in the strings on the guitar? Well, there's different gauges, right? And then with each uh, with each guitar there's multiple ways to tune them, right? So you have standard tuning, then you can tune them into different open chords. Uh, but for example, on a, on a 12 string, uh, uh, each of the string sets are an octave of each other, right? And uh, then on my nine string, uh, the top three, uh, the top two strings are doubled, and then the, the third string is an octave. So um, it, they're really not so different to play, uh, whether it be a six string, a nine string, or a 12 string, uh, but they certainly have a different feel in a different sound and then create kind of a different atmosphere. And again, for, for novice people who are uh, not knowledgeable about the guitar, what's what's sort of the biggest difference between an acoustic and ele an electric guitar? Well, I would say the acoustic guitars are pretty. They sound prettier, um, in my opinion. Electric guitars, you know, I always like to say that uh, you know, I'm a singer-songwriter, and I like to write love songs, right? So I always laugh at my friends that uh, that are pure electric guys, because if they're going to sit down and sing a love song for a girl, they've got to have a guitar and a chord and an amplifier. I can just 
just grab a guitar and let it go uh, and just play it all fully acoustic. So uh, the big difference to me uh, is that I think that uh, the acoustic guitars have a much mellower sound, uh, and I think that they're a bit more expressive uh, if they're played properly. Uh, electric guitars, obviously, you know, you have a lot of flexibility there, whether you want to rock it out or, or you know, drum along or, you know, do some kind of fancy neat stuff. So, you know, each one has their own their own place. Uh, one of the reasons that I play both guys, but at the end of the day, I, I, I prefer to play acoustic. Well, thank you for that brief guitar lesson. I definitely <laughs> learned a little bit. You got that one free, man. I'm not charging for that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> now, what genre of music do you consider your work to be? Well, it really kind of depends on, on uh, what radio station is playing. You know, we're, we're pretty fortunate to get played all over the world. And, uh, you know, when because of the way that I write songs, I really pick the genre of, of the song uh, based on the story of the song, right? So if it's a, uh, for example, on, on my Find Away project, uh, there's a song called Walk Away, and it's very angry, song, right? right? A bad time in my life, and I was really just kind of throwing all my anger into that song. Well, that's a rocker, right? That, that's one where you're going to grab an electric guitar, and you're going to hit power chords, and you're going to do all kinds of screaming leads, and you're going to do all that, right? Um, and so sometimes... Uh, you know, we get played in, in rock stuff. I won an, uh, an award for the best rock album of the month once. Um, I've also had a number one song uh, in the United States on the Roots chart in the folk music genre. And I've had, I don't even know how many songs, you know, in the top ten of, of country. So uh, what they typically do is they call my genre Americana, which means that it could be a just about anything. And uh, uh, that's really kind of good for me, you know, because I do write in different genres all the time. So, you know, I'm not a really a rock guy. I'm not really a folk guy. I'm not really a country guy. I'm kind of a little bit of everything all mixed in all together. So Americana is the genre that I would, I would say I fit best in. You know, that's really interesting because I've always kind of wondered myself about the Americana genre. So can you tell us a few... Um, maybe pioneers or notable names in the Americana genre? Oh, there's some that you would know uh, that, are, that are really, really different. So, for example, Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan is called Americana these days. So is Bruce Springsteen. That's a pretty diverse span of music, right, between Dylan and Springsteen. Uh, and, of course, you know, you've got, you know, some of the really classic guys, uh, you know, that are just always there. Some of them are pretty country. Uh, some of them are a little bit more rock and roll. Um, you know, and so it's it's really a wide variety of different kinds of music. But uh, uh, I call it kind of a catch-all. It's a catch-all. We don't really know what this is. This album's really not a rock album. It's really not a country album. It's really not a folk album. Let's just call it Americana. So that's about as, as good a description as I can get, yeah. I like it. Now, you talked about um, you've had a few albums that have gone number one. Can you talk a little bit about those those songs? Yeah, so um, uh, our Crossing Willow Creek project that came out uh, in November is actually my third project that I've done uh, since I kind of came back into music. I, I walked away for a long time and did the whole raising kids and family and all that stuff. Uh, and there just wasn't enough time. But uh, on the first album, uh, uh, there was a song called Willow Creek, uh, really kind of a country, folky kind of song uh, that won a bunch of awards. Uh, we came out with the second album that I called Find A Way, um, and Find A Way uh, charted for, well, it's still charting, right? It's been out for about three years now, and it's still, it's still landed on a few charts here or there. Uh, we had several songs on it that got into the top 10 of pick a chart, you know, different charts. Um, we had uh, uh, a really pretty love song that's on there that's called Goodbye Will Never Come Again is the song that hit number one uh, on the folk folk music world. 
And now we've got uh, Crossing Willow Creek out, and uh, I just saw today that it's it's now cracked the top 50 uh, in the United States uh, for an album, and we've got a song that's uh, the changes tune that I talked about earlier. Is I think it's it's right around in, in the 20s somewhere. So uh, it's picking up steam and, and doing pretty well. What's the feeling? I know for a lot of musicians, especially independent or unsigned musicians, really getting that feedback and getting a fan base that accepts your music is one of the biggest challenges. So for you as an artist that has had albums and songs go number one, what does that feel like to know that there is a real appreciation for your art? It, it's really cool. You know, I, I remember the first time uh, I was driving down the road listening to the radio and one of my songs came on. I mean, that's a moment, right? That, that's a moment that you'll never forget. Uh, but to have fans that, that listen listen to the music and appreciate, you know, what you've got to say and how you've had to say it and, and you know, all the, all the work that you go through uh, to get the music, you know, just so... so uh, uh, to have fans that, that appreciate that uh, and listen uh, is, is pretty spectacular. You know, I get uh, quite a bit of a feedback, you know, from our, our fan base, you know, about this song or that song or what's this song about. Or, you know, I, I have my little thing that I say that, uh, you know, if you hear a song that sounds like it was written about you, it may have been. Uh, it was so funny. Uh, just the other day, I got a, a message in from an old, old friend of mine that I haven't seen in ever, you know, and, uh, uh, they had listened to the Crossing Willow Creek album and, and she heard a song and she swore to God that I had written that song about her. And so that's fun for me. That's fun for me. The, uh, the interaction back and forth with the, with the fans and, and uh, you know, being able to, to uh, converse with them and, and explain, you know, maybe a little bit what the songs are really about and all that. That's, that's cool stuff. That's just fun. And can you uh, describe that feeling when you first, the first time you heard one, one of your songs on the radio? What was that like? <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I was driving across Kansas. I don't know if you've ever done this on I-70, but it's about the most boring drive on the planet, you know? And uh, just flat and straight, and there is nothing to see. And uh, I was just driving along, and you know how sometimes, you know, you... you, you uh, when you're driving, it's kind of a mindless task, right? So I'm day daydreaming and not really paying attention to what's going on. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, the radio was playing music because there's music on all the time, you know. And uh, oddly enough, a, a song came on and I thought, damn, that really sounds good. And I reached over and turned it up and it was me. Uh, so, you know, that was, uh, that was kind of that moment, you know, when you go, wow, that's pretty cool. Now, what inspires you to make music? Stories, right? Stories. So, um, you know, I, I, I try to write about things that are real, that things that really happen. Uh, sometimes it's things that happen to me, uh, and sometimes it's things that happen to people that are around me. And uh, I, I the, there's always a story, right? There's always something that you can pick out. There's always something that you can learn, you know, from each each of those situations that occur. And, and uh, to me, the most important thing is to be able to tell the story. That pass on what I've learned uh, in the process of, of evaluating the story and try to figure out what the true meaning is. And just to pass that on, that's, uh, that's cool. That's really what inspires me. So... Uh, uh, I really do legitimately write the lyrics first. As a matter of fact, this past weekend, uh, I wrote lyrics to two songs that I, I haven't even started to think about what the music's going to be or what the melody's going to be or any of that. It's just, they're just the stories, right? And uh, to me, to me, that's the inspiration. It's, it's, uh, it's not that I play this really cool guitar lick or, you know, it's not that I've really got a cool piano part. Uh, it's the story. You know, I think that the lyrics make the song, and, and uh, if, the, if the lyrics are solid, and the lyrics tell a story, and there's a, some message in there for somebody, uh, then that's really why I do it. Can you give us an example of a story that you've that you've um, crafted into a song? <laughs> 
Yeah, let's pick one off of three albums. Uh, so let's see. Uh, probably the best. Uh, the best example is a song that comes off of the Find a Way album. Uh, and it's called In Fort in a Storm. And uh, actually, that's incorrect. It's on the uh, Crossing World Creek album. Uh, this was about <laughs> rumors. So I got a call one day that, that uh, one of the our group of friends, right, one of the ladies had been having an affair uh, with some other guy. And, uh, uh, you know, it was a typical, you know, happy family, you know, husband, wife, you know, house on the hill, three kids, a dog, you know, a pretty picture, a pretty picture of, of you know, American families and American marriage. And, and uh, you know, for whatever reason, she decided that uh, she needed to go have an affair. And uh, that affair turned into, you know, really the destruction of that pretty picture that they had built and uh, really changed her life and the lives of not only her husband, but the lives of her children. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously it, it worked out not that the affair didn't pan out the way that she would hope, that it wasn't, you know, all that soulmate stuff that didn't work out, and then there was another, 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 and, and uh, I always kind of got the feeling that, that she was looking for something that, that she once had uh, and couldn't find it. So, uh, you know, if you think about it, I mean, any port in a storm, man, that's kind of the story. Now, that's a very sad situation, but it sure makes for some great song material. Yeah, I really like that, that, uh, that song. When I play it live, uh, I have flashbacks, right, of, of you know, getting the phone call and hearing what was going on. And, and then, uh, uh, you know, I'm that guy, I don't do rumors. So, you know, when I hear something like that, I, I go directly to the source. And I remember the discussion that we had and, and uh, you know, how she was explaining to me what her situation was and all that. And it kind of all comes back when I played that song. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was a little bit sad. On the other hand, uh, there's, a song, there's a song on the Find A Way album that is called uh, Start To Start, okay? And it's about a friend of mine uh, that, uh, you know, we both ended up being single uh, roughly at the same time. And uh, we had dated, you know, when we were little kids. And, and uh, we decided, you know, to go out. And uh, it, was, it was so funny because uh, uh, she has quite an imagination, you know. And sometimes an imagination is a really, really good thing. Uh, but sometimes it can kind of run amok, you know, and make you think about things that uh, really aren't even close to real. And uh, uh, that song is, is, a, is really a, the, some of the verses of that song really about her imagination because she had this dream that uh, she and I had went someplace and we were on a train and uh, she was standing there waiting for the train and turned around and I was completely gone and I just dumped her and walked off. Uh, it didn't happen and I'm not that guy uh, but I thought it was funny that her imagination had taken her there and so another story. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Yeah. I think that I think that there's lines in there that says, uh, "I won't leave you at a station, at an airport or a bar." That's your imagination that's taking you that far. So there you go. Wow. Now, can you think of an earliest memory involving music? Uh, well, you know, I started playing when I was pretty young, and I, I'm a child of the '70s. You know, so my memory's maybe not as good as it could be. Uh, but uh, probably a, a fun story is when I was in junior high, and uh, they had a talent show, right? And you had to try out. You had to try out for this talent show. And, uh, you know, I decided I wanted to try out. So I went and uh, tried out. And, and the group that was trying to pick, you know, who, who got the win and who got the nod and who got to be in the show came up to me and said, oh, my God, Bill, you've got to be in the show. You have got to be in the show. You're just so good, but you can't sing that song. And I looked 
looked at me and I said, well, what do you mean I can't sing that song? And they said, we think it's too suggestive. Well, there was a line in the song, actually it's Dan Fogelberg's song called Looking for a Lady, right? There was a line in the song that said, I'm looking for a lady to fill my empty bed, okay? So this was entirely too suggestive, evidently, you know? So if you're a 1984 fan, you know, Big Brother was there. Uh, and so I ended up actually playing a different song, uh, a John Denver song, and uh, it is the most requested song that that uh, I get when I play uh, that song, particularly if I'm in Kansas City. And it is a really pretty love song. It's called My Sweet Lady. Uh, but uh, the only reason that anybody ever heard me play the My Sweet Lady song was because the other song was too suggestive. So there you go. Now, you've had a very long music career, but thinking back, Initially, what made you want to be an artist? It was the audience, right? So when when you play, you know, I enjoy playing, so, you know, and I'm a bit of a back practice freak, and I play at home in my little studio all the time, right? But it's the feedback, really, that you get from the audience when you, when you play a tune or, you know, you have a great line or whatever, and you can see the connection. You can see they get it. You can see that that's having an impact on them at that particular time. You know, it could be they laugh if it's a funny song. You know, it could be they cry because if it's a sad song. Or it could be they smile because they could kind of relate to what you're talking about. But that's really, that's really what it's all about. It's really, you know, being able to share things that go on with you and see other people engage with them, you know, and kind of, you know, have a little symmetry there between the two of you. That, that's fun. That's, that's really why I do it. That's, that's great. Now, what music or artists influenced you? <laughs> well, as I said, I'm a, I'm a child of the 70s, so uh, not all uh, are from that genre, but or from that era. But, uh, you know, obviously Dan Bogart, huge. Uh, John Denver, love Jim Croce. Absolutely love Jim Croce's music. I thought he was a great storyteller. Uh, also became a big fan of, of Loggins and Messina and have followed, uh, you know, Kenny Loggins throughout his career. I'm also, uh, uh, some folks that are a little bit more uh, current, I'm also kind of a big John Mayer fan. I think John Mayer is a really good songwriter. Uh, and, you know, obviously the Eagles, right, from, from that genre. But I'm also a pretty big uh, Foo Fighters fan. I really think that Dave Grohl is a really, really good songwriter. And, uh, I'm also, you know, kind of arena rock. You know, that was kind of my thing. So, you know, Kansas, Boston, Oreo, Speedwagon, you know, those guys. Uh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of all that. But uh, uh, it's always fun for me to, to uh, have a little bit of time and kind of flash back into those sit back and listen to you know a live Jim Croce album listen to all the stories that he tells and uh, the back stories of the tunes that he writes and it's just it's fun for me uh, also big Jackson Brown guy uh, listen to I watched a uh, uh, documentary about Jackson Brown on uh, probably Netflix or something the other day and uh, told he told some of the back stories now some of the tunes came about and to me that's that's fascinating it really is. So those are some of the folks that have influenced me. Can you describe one of your first times performing in front of an audience? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a bit of a debacle. Uh, to be honest with you, I was in a, this, I was little, uh, young, and uh, I was in a, a singing group at church, and I was about, I was by far the youngest kid, right? And we traveled and toured you know, play camps and that kind of stuff all over the Midwest. And we had went to this one particular youth camp, and I was sick. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the show must go on, right? So it doesn't matter if you're sick. So I went out and performed. And as soon as, you know, as soon as we got done, you know, I ran back out to the, uh, to the travel thing, the travel home that we were using, right, the Winnebago. It just was sick as a dog, you know, just sick. And uh, uh, I stepped out of the, the Winnebago to kind of get some fresh air. 
and there were about five or six, you know, little girls uh, that were there all wanting an autograph. And, you know, here I was puking and just really not doing well. But, yeah, that was not a good moment for me. And how old were you? I might have been 12. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it was, I was pretty young, man. <laughs> and how did, how, did you, uh, how did you survive? Well, I did well. As a matter of fact, one of those girls is a friend of mine now. So, you know, you never know what, what life's going to bring you. But, uh, yeah, nothing like signing autographs between throwing up. It's perfect. Perfect. It's so sexy. <laughs> Now, where are some of the places that you've performed? Oh, really all over. Um, you know, some of my favorite places, I really like Colorado. Uh, and someday I hope that I get a chance to uh, perform at Red Rocks. I've always, that's always been a dream of mine. Uh, you know, but I've played in, in some of the cool places that tell you right. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, really cool, really pretty. You know, people really appreciate music there. You know, some of the great spots down in Nashville, you know, the, the you know the Bluebird and those places are great to play. Uh, you know, all over Kansas City and different places, St. Louis as well. Uh, had a really bad uh, event in uh, Chicago. I was just when I was young, and uh, <laughs> I was playing an outdoor festival, right? And it was hot. And uh, I was playing about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you know. So send the acoustic dude up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's 95 degrees and 110% humidity, and, you know. So, you know, when it's hot like that, you have to, you have to drink a lot. Uh, and, and we were drinking a lot, but we weren't drinking a lot of water. And right in the middle of my last song of about a 45-minute set, so at this point, you know, I'm just dripping sweat. Uh, right in the middle of my last song, uh, the left mains. You know, this was a big. This was a big thing. There were probably ten thousand people, right? And the the left mains clipped and shut off. And the first thing that I thought of is, oh my God, I'm having a stroke because I just completely lost uh, everything that was going on uh, on on and coming into my left ear. And they clipped back on. But that was a moment. That was a moment when I thought, oh my God, Bill, this is not good. So yeah. Funny things like that happen, you know, when you're out playing. Wow, that is incredible. <laughs> it was a good time. We still laugh about it from time to time. So, one of those moments where you kind of go, wow. Yeah. And which songs do you perform most frequently? Uh, it depends. Uh, you know, it depends on the, the audience, right? So, if, if I'm doing pure acoustic stuff, uh, you know, I'm probably going to play most of the really pretty, you know, acoustic tunes like, you know, Willow Creek and, and Any Port in a Storm and, and uh, my, my hit song, you know, the Goodbye Will Never Come Again song, uh, you know, the pretty acoustic stuff. Uh, we're currently working on a, a project in the studio uh, that we'll have out on YouTube of all places. Uh, you know, I get a lot of questions about uh, what's it like in the music studio. And then I also have people who say, man, it'd be really cool to hear you play this song. You know, it's a cover song from somebody. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, there's always, you know, we'd really like to see you play live. Well, you know, I have a job, you know. And uh, so music is really, you know, my second job. Uh, so what we decided to do is try to kill three birds with one stone and uh, show everybody on, on uh, YouTube what it's like in the studio and record some cover songs live in the studio with the full band, uh, which will also show people a little bit like what it's like when we're playing live. So uh, we started that project, and I'm having, I'm having a good time with it. But uh, I took requests that some of the songs that we're going to play are uh, uh, maybe a little bit different for me. But yeah. <laughs> Should it, I think we're going to have fun with it, whether it may you know, I mean, it sucks, but, you know, we're having fun doing it, so. No, I think that's a great idea, um, giving fans that in-studio footage, especially in the social media era that we live in today, where musicians really need to create a lot of content in order to feed their fans and, you know, keep their brand in front of them. So that yeah. in-studio footage is something that I recommend really to all musicians to try to give their fans, um, you know, a peek behind the curtain. 
Yeah, and, you know, we're gonna we've got a, a fairly big show that we're gonna do in Kansas City, like July the twentieth, uh, and so we're gonna use this uh, this video stuff in the studio as, as our practice time effectively for that show. So it'll be fun. You know, the guys that uh, the guys that I play with are they're, they're phenomenal musicians. Just better than me, uh, uh, but we also have a pretty good time. So you know, hopefully that'll translate over. You know, to the video itself, and uh, hopefully we'll play pretty well. We hope. Now you've had a very extensive music career. How would you say that your music has evolved? Uh, well, actually, that's what Crossing Willow Creek, the concept behind that album, is. So, I think I mentioned earlier that the, the first album that I did, you know, when I got back into music uh, after my little thirty-five year break. Uh, was really acoustic, okay? Like I said, that's, that's kind of my comfort zone. So the first album that I came out, purely acoustic. I did not allow an electric instrument in it. Uh, and then the second album uh, was quite a bit more produced, the Find A Way album, you know? Um, and so when I heard the Find A Way album, we were practicing uh, for some live shows that we were gonna do to promote the Find A Way album. You know, we needed a couple of, of acoustic songs, you know, to throw into the set. And so we started playing around with some acoustic songs and we decided, you know what, man, these are good. Let's produce them up. So we re-recorded, if you would, uh, a lot of the tunes from the Changes album and jazzed them up a little bit, produced them up a little bit. And uh, uh, really, they're, they're far better. You know, they're just far better uh, than their pure acoustic cells. So the concept, as my first song that I had that I wrote that, that went out, you know, got radio play and, you know, won awards and all that stuff, was actually called Willow Creek and it was purely acoustic, right? The concept behind the album is that we're crossing over that. We're, we're going to move from this purely acoustic world into this far more, you know, produced world and we're going to cross over that creek called Willow Creek. And so that's really the concept of the album. So has how has my music evolved over the years? Uh, I'm the same dude. You know, I'm the same singer-songwriter that I was when I was a kid. I think I'm a little bit better. You know, I think that the more you do something, you know, you get a little bit better at, at the craft. Uh, but I think that the, the big key for me that's really evolved over time is the fact that I'm willing to my music a bit more uh, than I did when I originally started. Now, what's one piece of advice that you could give for an aspiring musician or a musician just starting out in their music career? Be yourself. You know, there's a lot of, uh, there's an old saying, and I think it was, uh, it may have been George Carlin that said this. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that can play the notes, but there's very few people that know why they need to be played, right? So, be yourself. It's cool to learn how to play other people's stuff. And it's cool to learn how to emulate, you know, artists that, that, that you're impressed with. But don't be a copycat, man. Be willing to be yourself and show people who you are. Uh, you know, I mean, there's there's a place, right? There's a place for the cover songs and there's a place for all that. Uh, but if you really want to express yourself and be, you know, the writer that, that everybody wants to be, the best thing to do is to figure out who you are, figure out what your sound is, and go with it and see if it works. And if it works, great. You know, if it doesn't, at least you, you went out and said, here I am, this is who I am. Do you like it? Do you not? Um, and, you know, that, that would be the best advice that I could give anyone. Yeah, I completely agree. I think authenticity is certainly key um, in terms of musicians connecting with their fan base. So that's certainly some great advice. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, when you look at some of the great artists over time, they really don't sound like each other. Just they, they found the sound, they found themselves, and, and that's what set them apart. So, I mean, you know, it's there. Just figure it out and do it. Now, can you share your social media links? Yeah, I sure can. So, uh, I'll share a couple, and, and then uh, when you go to Village, you'll find all the other ones. So... Uh, my webpage is BillAbernathy.com. Uh, you can go there and you can see quite a bit more about me. You know, there's there's uh, uh, 
you know, all the tunes are out there, all the music out there. You can see a lot of the artwork. There's also quite a few photos of uh, some of some are from the studio themselves. You know, that that, that were taken while we were doing work. And so you can see that. I mean, there's a bunch of press out there uh, that you know we picked up over the years. So you can read, the, you know, what other people are saying about what our tunes are and what our music is like. Uh, and so again, that's BillAbernathy.com. And uh, I use Facebook quite a bit. So if you go to Facebook and go to Bill Abernathy, singer songwriter, you will find my Facebook homepage. And again, on there are links to you know Instagram and Twitter and all the other social media platforms that we use. So uh, the two to remember is Bill Abernathy, singer songwriter on Facebook and BillAbernathy.com. Now, is there anyone you'd like to acknowledge for offering financial or emotional support to you in your music career? <laughs> uh, well, as I mentioned, uh, you know, I have this, this other job, right? My, my corporate job. So, uh, you know, I, I pay as I go, right? So, uh, any, any charges or costs are incurred in any of you know, my projects, I, I self fund those. Of course, they pay me back, right, uh, over time. But, uh, you know, I do self fund those. But from an emotional standpoint, uh, uh, my kids and, and my family uh, are really, really important to me. You know, I've got two kids, a son and a daughter, and I've got uh, uh, two twin 14 year old grandsons and a two year old uh, little grand granddaughter. So uh, they're, they're my inspiration, you know, and they're, they're really what it's all about for me. So uh, they support me, and, uh, you know, they'll tell me my son uh, is a musician as well, you know, he'll, taste, he'll tell me, Dad, that this is not good, you need to change that, you know. So, uh, yeah, really important to me that, that and, and I have a really good core base of friends that support me quite a bit. So, Is there anything else you'd like to promote or share? <laughs> well, just go out and find us. You know, go to the, go to the websites, go to Facebook. You know, go to Spotify, go to iTunes, go to Apple, wherever. You know, our music is everywhere. And uh, take a listen. You know, and, and if you like what you hear, great. If you don't, uh, you know, my music's not for everybody, and, and everybody's not for my music, and I'm cool with that. Uh, but if you do like it, you know, send me a note. Right, get get onto the Facebook or or get on my website and send me a note and say, hey, you know, I really like this song, or or ask me a question. You know, hey, Bill, what's that song really all about? Um, you know, I'm all about you know interfacing, you know, and, and communicating with people. And so, uh, you know, I do have a deal that uh, you know, if you're still into hard copies, not many people are. I understand that, but. Uh, if you're into hard copies and you order from my website, uh, I'll personalize that autograph it and send it to you. Uh, so, you know, we can get in contact that way as well. So, uh, but I really do like feedback. I really like to hear from people. Uh, and if you've got a great story, uh, you know, that you think that maybe, you know, it could be a good song, send it to me. You know, we'll take a run at it. And you and I can work together uh, and see what it comes out with. I mean, we've got a song on uh, Find A Way. Uh, that is actually a story that an old friend sent to me that evolved itself into a song. It's really, uh, and the song is called This I Know, uh, and uh, it's it's somebody else's story that I took and kind of morphed and, and turned it into a song. So, you know, if you've got that kind of information, you've got a story, you've got an idea, send it to me. You never know. It may, it may turn out, it may not, but at least it'd be fun doing it. All right. Well, I'd like to give a very big thank you to my guests for joining me today on the Creative Collective. As always, write your comments below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. And for all of your promotion, marketing, as well as music career consulting needs, email ennisproductions at gmail.com.